My name is Eric Robbins. I'm a urologist here at uh, South Bay. I think I know most of you guys, so thanks for coming. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Tapas Fleming, who developed a, a highly cool technique called Tapas Acupressure Technique. And I'd like to share with you just a little bit about how I learned about that technique and some of the ways I've used it. So, um, you know, when I grew up, I grew up in Houston, and I can remember coming home from school every day, and my mom would be sick in bed every day. And, uh, you know, she'd gone to all the doctors in the Texas Medical Center. Nobody could find anything physically wrong. And, you know, she saw some therapists who said she wasn't crazy. So, you know, it was like, it lends the question, like, what's causing her? I mean, she seemed really sick, and yet, you know, nobody could really find out a diagnosis. So that kind of, you know, she had chronic fatigue and stuff like that going on her whole life. So that led me to, as I got older and got in med school and, and residency, to kind of wonder, like, you know, where do people get their energy from? And, and what allows us to heal? And, you know, what is, the, what is the role that emotions play in our health? So I can remember uh, very, early, very early on in my practice, urology practice, I had, you know, some, some young sexually active women come in and they were getting urinary tract infections after intercourse. And again, I, you know, we checked them out anatomically, everything was fine. And, you know, again, I, I just began to wonder, like, you know, a lot of women are sexually active that are not getting UTIs. And so the ones that are, it just hit me one day, like, why isn't that part of their body preventing this? Why isn't the healing energy flowing down there? And so thoughts like that just kind of began to enter my consciousness. And so I began a study of uh, a variety of forms of alternative healing. And one of the things, if you study any form of alternative healing, whether it's acupuncture, or acupressure, or homeopathy, or energy healing, any of those things, they have a certain set of beliefs in common. Number one, they all believe the body tends to heal itself. So I guess most of you in here would agree with that. And then they say that there's some sort of healing energy that flows to the body that allows it to happen. And then they say when the energy is blocked, it predisposes to disease. And then they all in their various ways try and unblock the energy. So obviously acupuncture uses needles in the meridian system to get the energy to flow and this type of thing. Um, when I first started here at Kaiser, I studied a form of energy healing called pranic healing. And it was very good art and helped a lot of people and probably some family members of some of you here had some of my pranic healing sessions early on. And pranic healing is great, but one of the things, again, that kept occurring to me, it's like all these systems say, when the energy is blocked, it predisposes to disease, and when blocked the energy, people get better. But the higher level question, again, to me was, why is the energy blocked to begin with? What's blocking the chi or the prana or the ruach or the life force to begin with? Because that's really the higher level question. It's like either you think, is like God you know, looking down and picking John to block his energy, or is there a reason why John's energy is blocked? And what we found is that about 90% of the time, the thing that blocks the flow of the body healing energy is stress and negative emotions and past traumas. And if you think about it in your own experience, one of the things we know is that if, you know, that if someone's had a past traumatic memory, for example, or stress, you, know, you feel that in your body. And past traumas, for example, whether we like it or not, those memories are held inside. Okay, and because it doesn't feel good to think about these things, we unconsciously hold these feelings and memories inside the body to keep them from coming up to conscious awareness. And the way that we do that frequently is tension and spasm of the smooth and skeletal muscles in the body. So, you know, as a urologist, I mean, we're dealing with a lot of skeletal muscle, you know, the bladders, I mean, we're dealing with a lot of smooth muscle, the bladder's smooth muscle, you know, GI guys are dealing with things like, you know, irritable bowel syndrome, which is the second leading cause of this work in this country, you know, the entire intestinal tract is made up of smooth muscle. Migraine headaches are basically a disorder of the smooth muscle and the blood vessels going to the brain. You know, asthma is, a, asthma is a disorder of the smooth muscles and the air passages of the lungs. Hypertension is vascular smooth muscles clamping down and tight, tightening. So again, I again began to wonder is, you know, at least in theory, I began to wonder is it possible to clear emotional issues at a deep enough level where where you literally clear those issues, emotional issues out of the body, and the body just, the body relaxes, the muscles relax, and you get healing of a wide, of a wide assortment of diseases. So that was at least in theory. If we clear emotional issues at a deep enough level, maybe you could get physical healing of a lot of medical problems. So I went on a many year search to find out ways and methods, you know, of you know, techniques that would really clear emotional issues at a deep enough level where you get a physiologic shift. So after all these years of doing this now, it's been about 20 years, I basically distilled it down to two techniques that clear emotional issues at a deep enough level where you feel the shift in your body, 
you know, frequently it heals disease and nothing else. And I know most of you guys are here tonight, not because you want to be mind body healing experts, but just because you want to heal yourself. Um, so these techniques work and clear away stress at a body level. And TAT is one of those two uh, methods that I use to do that. So I'll give you a few case reports of how I use, t uh, you know, how I've used TAT in my experiences with it. And then I'm gonna turn the, the mic over to Tapas because I know she's raring to go. <laughs> Um, actually, uh, where's Linda? I had raise your hand. There's my wife sitting there. So uh, about 14 or 15 years ago, we had just moved to uh, the South Bay. You know, the climate's a lot different here than the valley where we came from. And Linda, was, Linda had about a year of severe uh, kind of sinus infection and post-nasal drip and, and just congestion. And we saw some ENT doctors and they gave medications and wasn't helping. And after a year, she was really miserable and it was interfering with her sleep. And I took her to see Tapas, and after one one hour session, her sinuses cleared up, the problem disappeared, never came back. That's 15 years ago. And by the way, my wife's probably one of the biggest skeptics of all this alternative woo <laughs> stuff that I do, and uh, it worked on her. So that was number one. The second thing is um, about 13, 14 years ago, I, you know, I see a lot of chronic pain issues, chronic pelvic pain, interstitial cystitis, things like that. And um, I had three different women in my practice at that time that weren't getting better. I mean, they kept calling, you know, we did all the stuff in the standard urology paradigm and all the medications, and then I did all the alternative healing stuff that I knew how to do at the time. And they were calling me every week, a few times a week, the bladder's hurting, they got a pee all the time, they weren't getting better. And um, right about that, and a couple of them, by the way, had like psychiatric diagnoses. Like one woman had, I forget, what's the, two, what's the DID? dissociative identity, multiple personalities, okay? So, I mean, these women had heavy, heavy stuff going on. So Tapas calls me out of the blue one day, says, Eric, I've got some extra time, I'd like to come do some service by working in your clinic. I said, do I have some patience for you? <laughs> I sent Tapas these women, and uh, I think you saw them each twice, and they disappeared. I never heard from them again. Um, she didn't tell me where the bodies were buried. <laughs> I just never heard from these guys. They got better, they disappeared. I never heard from any of them ever again. So that was, you know, that was very unusual because these were really tough cases. Um, one last case, actually, I, I uh, wrote a, a chapter for a book on alternative healing a few years ago, and I recounted the story. I had a, a 21 or 22 year old uh, gal that came to see me. Again, she was having a lot of pelvic pain, a lot of urinary frequency and urgency. I mean, she literally like urinated in the restroom, walked 20 feet to my office, have to go back and pee again. Okay, it just this went on constantly. And so as I was talking to her, you know, I um, you know, I know the sun is abuse and these type memories are held in the body and frequently in the pelvis. So I was talking to her and I said, you know, did you ever have a history of abuse? Now I know I know you guys out there a lot of docs are out there and I know listen, I want you to think about this. You know, you're in the office, you've got a, a very, you know, a schedule with a lot of patients coming in. You know, it takes it takes some waybos to ask that question to begin with because you're worried. You know, you're gonna un, you're gonna open up Pandora's box, that type thing. Um, but I said, have you ever been abused? And I've kind of been trained to look at some of the subtleties in people's faces and their facial musculature and their lower lips. And I noticed after I asked that question, the slightest tear well up in her eye, and I thought to myself, we gotcha. You know, there's something there. It turned out this gal had been sexually abused by an uncle from age three till 10. She was penetrated every day for you know, six or seven years. So that's a lot of, you know, obviously physical and emotional trauma. Anyway, um, I didn't have a lot of time to work. I had, I had her uh, go through the TAT uh, protocol, Tapas Acupressure Technique Protocol. One session in 30 minutes, she couldn't get any feeling tone when she thought about the, the memory. Beforehand, I said, think about the abuse. Notice how intense the emotions are. Notice where you feel in your body. And she could do that. When I was done 20 minutes later, she couldn't feel any feeling in her body, couldn't make it feel bad, couldn't get the feeling back. Um, and her bladder got better. And I had one or two year follow up. She was just done in one session. So this stuff is possible. Um, yeah, there's a couple techniques I use. TAT is one for sure. Um, and you could really, if you're a provider, really see a steady stream of miracles in the clinic. So anyway, with that, I'm going to turn the stage over to Tapas, and it's my honor and pleasure to have you here, Tapas, so thanks so much for coming out.